I know I said we weren't going to play. No. Shake it up. Shake it down. And I wasn't kidding. We can go to the next song. So you're a philosopher? You're a philosopher? Yeah. Boogie down yes. production. What? Yes, what? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. what? What, what? I think very deeply. I, I think, think very, very deeply. deeply. Think Ladies and gentlemen, KRS1 and DJ Scott LaRock and Boogie down productions the late dj scott larock ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen gentlemen and ladies let's have a little conversation shall we accept it for value you mean to tell me it does exist i hope it do exist okay ladies and gentlemen the law does recognize accept it for value go ahead and read it article 3 section 409 article 3 section 303 and article 4 section 212 Go and read it. So don't let nobody tell you that accepting for value is bull. Okay, because they're lying to you. Now, hold on. Hold on. Letter of credit means a definite undertaking that satisfies the requirements of Section 5104 by an issuer, you, a banking institution, to a beneficiary at the request or for the account of an applicant or in the case of a financial institution, you, financial institution, go back and read the Presidential Proclamation 2039 to itself or its own account to honor or documentary presentation by payment and or delivery of the item of value. So, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. An issuer means a bank. Remember, pay attention. OID. Original issuer discount. An issuer means a bank or other person that issues a letter of credit but does not include an individual who makes an engagement for personal, family, or household purposes. Y'all need to be paying attention to defamonitions. Okay? Just want to let y'all know. There you go. This is all talking about letters of credit. Okay? But remember, it ain't about money. It's always about money. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to do you a favor. Pick a topic and do your research on that topic. They're all just whack, 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 whack. He's brown from the Boogie Down production. KRS1, everybody. Now, I do like the way he says something. You know, DJ Scott LaRock. This is when Scott LaRock was around. Ladies and gentlemen, 9-102. Hold on. Definition and index of definition. The first thing we're going to... Wait, wait, hold on. That my ancestors eat chicken and watermelon, talk broken English and drug selling? Karis, what did you really say that? Chicken and watermelon? Man, I lost me some chicken! <laughs> lost me some chicken! Sorry, I'm not a chicken lover. I do not eat chicken. I do not eat meat. Oh, so you don't fit the stereotype. Your mama fits the stereotype. Well, actually, she don't fit the stereotype. Her it's too big. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 9, section 102. Definitions. This is what we're going to be covering for a short moment. 9, section 102, we're going to do consumer goods. Now, I want you all to pay attention. This is all your definitions. So if you want to go and look up the definitions for all the words in here, start here. Consumer goods means goods that are used or bought for use primarily for personal, family, or household purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, household for your house. Your house is your personal home what is a consumer goods transaction a consumer goods transaction occurs when an individual incurs an obligation primarily for personal family or household purposes a security interest in consumer goods secures the obligation ladies and gentlemen your home is a consumer good but they call it real estate why do they call it real estate 
because it's investment. It's an investment property. That's why some documents list you as a tenant. What? I ain't no mother tenant, mother. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just telling you how things work. Okay? Well, I don't get how things work. That's not what. Oh, shut up. Oh, don't you dare be telling me. Click. Okay? That's how that works. We have a letter of credit right, means a right to a payment of performance under a letter of credit. Whether or not the beneficiary has demanded or is at the time entitled to demand payment of performance. The term does not include a right of beneficiary to demand payment of performance under a letter of credit. <laughs> okay, don't care about manufactured homes? Mortgage means a person that becomes bound as debtor under section 9-203 by security agreement previously entered into by another person. Really? That's what a mortgage means? Oh my goodness. And hold on. Give me one second. Proceeds, don't care. Promissory note, don't care. Proposal, y'all can care about some of these other things, but that's not why I'm doing this, okay? Give me one second. Don't care about secure party, don't care about security agreement. Everybody thinking they gotta do all of that stuff. What's a transmitting utility? Well, transmitting utility means a business that primarily is operating railroad, subways, street railroad, trolley bus, uh, street railway, excuse me, transmitting communication electronics, electromagnetically by light, transmitting goods and pipeline and sewers, transmitting or producing or transmitting electricity, streams of gas. Ladies and gentlemen, you are a transmitting utility. Do you not transmit electricity? Do you not communicate electronically? You know that your body operates off of electricity. Don't you get that? My bad. Do you not know that you transmit goods by sewer? I, hey, I, hey, hey, don't go there, but that's what I'm trying to tell you so that you understand, okay? All right. With that being said, we have that definition. Now, consumer goods. Now we have one more that we need to check out. Section 109. Oh, mama, I like Listerine. Well, we're going to use scope for this video. Oh, I hope it smells minty fresh. Ladies and gentlemen, easier because this one is longer. So we're going to do control F on our keyboard and we're going to type in E X E M P T exempt oh snap it ain't here uh oh it ain't here so now i gotta find out where it is give me a second we're gonna hold on for one second one second ladies and gentlemen i do need to explain something to y'all so that y'all's get it because i know y'all's don't get it and i'm trying to i'm gonna try to explain it to you we're going to zoom on, zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know. Except as otherwise provided in C and D, this article applies to a transaction regardless of its forms that creates a security interest in personal property and fixtures by contract. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. An agricultural lien. You are agriculture. You are made of the same elements of the soil. You are agriculture. Don't take my word for it. Promissory notes. You guys have all kind of promissory notes out there. Okay, then a security interest arising out of these sections. Security interest arising out of this section. That's how they're doing this, y'all. Leeches and attachments. Oh, them mother and leeches. Okay. So, give me one more second. Got one more thing to show y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about taxes. So, at the 10 minute mark is where you need to come into this video. Henry Bach. The right to acquire property, and that these rights necessarily carry with them the right to gain or earn a living and acquire property by following any useful and legitimate occupation the pursuit of which 
is not injurious to the public welfare. If you deprive a man of the means of livelihood, you necessarily deprive him of the right to live and to enjoy life. Great is the taxation power of government. However, it can never rise superior to the inalienable rights guaranteed by the Constitution. This is California that says this, ladies and gentlemen. Great is the power of taxation, but it can never rise superior to the inalienable right to live. You have a right to earn a living. You cannot be taxed on your right to live. Pay attention. This is very important. Look, all you got to do is go to case text. No tax on earning a living as everyone has the right to life, okay? Document the case law because this is what we're gonna be producing next. Won't be doing it until later today. I will eventually put the link underneath this video. So this video will come up, be put up later today. I will create the document, okay? I will create the document. Pay attention. Hold on. Uh, let's do right there. Copy. Don't need to write what state this comes out of because let's go to the next state. There are few more important things in a person's life, both legally and socially, than an opportunity to earn a living. In effect, the majority implies that the state itself can legally label a person as mentally disabled. We don't care about that. In a free state, the ability to earn a living by pursuing one's calling and supporting oneself and one's family is not an economic good. It is a human good, thus cannot be taxed. Okay, let's go on down. The law recognizes one's right to live and the majority of people are compelled to earn a living. Oh, look at that, and there's a settled rule there's a settled rule, really? So everybody has the right to earn a living or the right to live, like the right to marry and have children and the right to live where one wants and pursue a livelihood by any lawful means, this right constitutes a liberty or freedom interest. Has nothing to do with the Constitution. The Constitution did not give you a right. The 14th Amendment is a privilege. The right to live is secured by the 5th Amendment to the United States Constitution. The right to earn a living by pursuing an ordinary occupation is protected by the Constitution. Ah, uh, that is so sweet. Hold on. Many of you have been receiving letters from the Internal Revenue Service. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here. And we're going to do the same thing to the Internal Revenue Service. Y'all hold on one second, okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's been about two hours since I put the video on pause. What I want to do is I want to play this information and let you guys listen to the letter that's been created. And we're going to do our spell check while the letter is playing. Here we go. Ready, boys and girls? Dear principal or agent and or recipient, this communication is with reference to the alleged contractual relationship, I have a right to an authenticated record of accounting. I am not requesting a statement of account for an authenticated record of the accounting. I am hereby disputing the alleged debt and to require that you provide the requested information within the time allotted by law, which is 14 calendar days. You have made a presumptive implication that I am required to pay taxes on my income. What you failed to document is that I am not required to pay taxes on anything utilized for household goods, consumer goods, personal goods. More on my right to learn a living and to pursue happiness as a result thereof. I do wish to thank you for your time in providing this information, which is readily available to you as the custodian of records and on a collective entity. Please note that each day beyond the 14th calendar day of receipt of this communication I will be assessing a $33 per day penalty for your failure to comply and or $1,000 per month. Whichever is greatest. 
I have the right to this information as indicated by the Uniform Commercial Code. UCC Paragraph 9-210 Request for Accounting Request regarding list of collateral or statement of account Request for Accounting Request regarding list of collateral or statement of account A. Definitions 1. Request Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to skip past this part because there's no reason for us to go over this again. The reason why we can give this to the Internal Revenue Service will be explained shortly in the communication. You see, the courts have said that the Internal Revenue Service is an agency of the United States government. <coughs> Excuse me, had to call. Uh, oh, you got corona! You got corona! You got corona! You got... Shut up! Man. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, ragweed and cottonwood is in bloom. We're 70 degrees, so flowers are blooming, bugs are starting to pop up everywhere. Um, ladies and gentlemen, since the Internal Revenue Service engages in commercial business activities, how do they engage in commercial business activity that's not a governmental function? Well, the moment that they try to tax a non-taxpayer, the IRS has no jurisdiction over a non-taxpayer. Now, those of you who receive these notices from the IRS saying you owe money from years ago, you let them know that I wasn't required to follow, uh, file any taxes then. I was a non-taxpayer during that period. Now, I want you to listen to the rest of the letter. Matter of fact, we can get rid of this up. Uh-oh, don't want to do that right by your, that, that right there, that, that there. Uh, and what we're looking for. So y'all hold on. Get rid of that. To have? Okay. Now, we're going to continue, shall we? I promise you if you pay attention to the information, you might learn something. This authenticated record must include all tax filings, including all 1099s, 1096s, and 1098s any and all trades and our investments and our interests associated with this account of which I am alleged to be a party. I have a right to this information, as it's directly associated with the reporting activities associated with my financial record. It is believed that this was and or is considered a consumer debt, and is classified as household goods exempt from taxation. The associated debt was not used for commercial purposes, nor for profit in or gain as defined by the Uniform Commercial Code Article 9 Section 102 and 109. Please correct your records to reflect the aforementioned. My property is neither real estate nor investment property, it is private property. And under the Right to Property Clause of the Bill of Rights for the State and for the United States of America, these are my possessions, my property, my interest. And I do not wish to be liable by any other attempts to seize what is mine by right. The Internal Revenue Service is a debt collector. The Internal Revenue Service sends out notifications to parties such as myself demanding that they are liable for a debt and that that debt is owed to the United States of America. With the Internal Revenue Service fails to tell the parties how they accumulated the accounting calculations, which they are required to do upon demand. The Internal Revenue Service has no jurisdiction over all household goods and personal effects not used for the production of income shall be exempt from property taxation. And consumer goods are defined by the Act as goods, which are primarily for personal, household, family, or agricultural purposes. I'm 7205648340. I have to pause it for a second because I have to read something to you guys. This is regarding Equifax. We're going to minimize this for now so that I can increase the size. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a case involving Equifax. Equifax is a debt collector under the FDCPA. The reason why Equifax was a debt collector because Equifax purchased dishonored checks from merchants and contacted the check maker, the debtor, through a series of collection letters demanding full payment. The FDCPA requires a debt collector to provide a written notice including the amount of the debt, the creditor's name, and a statement. This is supposed to be that the debtor. That's a mistype. Give me one second to get my screen to act right. TH, that the debtor has 30 days to dispute the debt. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Equifax acting as a debt collector. Imagine that. Well, the IRS, when it's collecting debts on behalf of the United States, 
Okay, remember, the IRS is not the United States. It wasn't the United States last week. It won't be the United States tomorrow. The IRS, when it is collecting debts on behalf of the United States, is collecting debts under the premise that any debt claimed owed the United States, it's deemed valid. That's the 14th Amendment. Okay, that's what Congress did. However, here's the problem. Any debt owed the United States is deemed valid only with respects to United States citizens. Because remember, it's part of the 14th Amendment. It is not a separate section of the 14th Amendment. It is a subsection of the 14th Amendment. And you always challenge the 14th Amendment as unconstitutional. Why? Because the 14th Amendment does not apply to you. You are not a quote unquote United States citizen as defined in law. This is the EIN number it was just reading. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the EIN for the Internal Revenue Service, let me show you something, is from this document. Okay? The EIN number is the National Finance Service, I think it's National Finance Service Center. Okay? Because they do that EIN number for this organization. You can find it in this list. It's called Federal Agency Address for withholding. You can find the list all over the internet. I just downloaded this one today. It's already, we already have the list up there. The 2012 list is almost identical to the 2021 list. 2017 list, almost identical. Why? Because the only thing they've added is some other clarification of certain agencies that weren't added there before. All right. We're going to let the young lady continue. One second. I don't know if it's Heather or Sharon. I got to find out who she is. I did. Oh, I hit the wrong button, y'all. Hit the wrong button. I'm supposed to be hitting this button. And that's usually because this thing is all the way down here normally. So let's put it there now. All right. Come on. Who we got? That's Heather, y'all. So y'all just hold on while Heather talks. I'm 72056483 is utilized for processing payments for the Internal Revenue Service. However, the Internal Revenue Service and the United States Department of the Treasury are employers required to have an employee identification number by statute. And if these agencies conduct any commercial business, they waive sovereign immunity and are treated as any other corporation, which documents that the Internal Revenue Service is a private corporation. How so? This is neither a presumption and or an assumption. The following is a fact that is documented by the Internal Revenue Service own records and the official records for the courts of the United States. Note the following, since there can be no taxation on a person's right to life, nor on a non-taxpayer, is it not so that there can be no assessment of taxes on a non-taxpayer? It appears that your initial argument is frivolous and without merit, and because in this instance I stand as a non-taxpayer, for the law recognizes my non-taxpayer status on my household goods, consumer goods, cost of living, and just compensation for my labor, to tax my laborers to subject me to involuntary servitude, which is a violation of my secured and inalienable right to be free from involuntary servitude, I do hereby rebut your presumption by way of this affidavit and demand that you prove otherwise. And as a non-taxpayer since the collection of taxes against my person and or my property interest is extra-governmental, and nowhere in the Internal Revenue Code does it permit the taxation of a non-taxpayer, this body is acting outside its jurisdiction and must be acting in the capacity while engaged in commercial business of a private corporation. In addition, with respect to my wages, they are classified as follows. Net income is defined by referencing IRC paragraph 63, 2010, which defines federal taxable income as gross income less certain exclusions and deductions. Gross income is defined by referencing IRC paragraph 61, 2010. Section 61A1 includes as gross income all income from whatever source, including C. Compensation for services, including fees commissions, fringe benefits, and similar items, defines federal taxable income as gross income less certain exclusions and deductions, we therefore must take into consideration the following. 31 in your, P843, the right to pursue any lawful occupation or calling is generally, if not universally, recognized as property within the due process clause of the federal constitution. Every man has a natural right to the fruits of his own labor. 
The right to earn wages is just as much property and within the protection of the due process clause of the 14th Amendment to the Federal Constitution as earned wages. 12 and your P353. Now, did you See how on V. What was, hold on now. Did you guys get what was said here? That the right to earn wages is just as much property, your property rights, and within the protection of the due process clause and we're going to get of the we're going to get rid of that of the federal constitution we're doing due process clause of the 5th amendment as earned wages did you see that so your right to earn wages is your property because it is the fruits of your labor you are not owned by government so the government cannot sit up there and assess your value and or your labor to do that government would be assessing a value on your life one life over another because if somebody earned more than you they're taxed more than you in some cases that means that the government is valuating a person's life which means it's a violation of the equal protection principles of the constitution we're going to let her finish reading the rest of it y'all pays attention now See how on V. Local Union 306. Uh, uh, Chio, 331 Mitch. In absolute security from unlawful molestations, and wherever such protection is not fully accorded, not the laws themselves, but their execution is to be blamed. In this country a man's constitutional liberty means far more than his mere personal freedom. It means that, among other rights, his is the right to freely labor and to own the fruits of his toil. Ex part J E N T Z S C H. 112 Cal, 468, 32 LRA 664, 44 P803. We see my labor belongs to me, it is my property, and I have the right to be secured in my property and not to be deprived of my property without due process of law. So please do not group me with individuals who have made claims in the past, as each one of the points that I bring forth are substantial rebuttals to any claim made by your organization. And you shall provide the authenticated accounting as required by law. As noted above you have a duty and our obligation to respond with the appropriate information within the time frame allotted and are permitted by law. In conjunction with other related laws and or statutes of limitations. Because this is associated with the debt that is being reported the following applies respectively, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and or the Truth in Lending Act, penalties and assessments or failure to act and or failure to comply with the statutory requirements, please be advised. I sincerely intentionally thank you for your compliance with this notification. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a five page document. We have a lot of people who are wondering how to respond to the IRS. The IRS is acting as a debt collector when they give you a certain time to pay. They're following the Administrative Procedures Act, even though according to the courts, the Administrative Procedures Act does not apply to the IRS. Imagine that. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one other thing that I need to bring to y'all's attention. The first document that I did, the request for accounting, we're going to save this IS. Watch this. Save IS. Save IS. Save IS. And we're going to go documents. And the reason why I have to save it that way, because I'm putting it up in the very same spot for those of you who have been told by the Internal Revenue Service you owe money, but they have not provided any proof as to how you owe money, that they're operating off of a presumption. You must read this document and read the case law. You didn't know that they have to provide you an authenticated assessment, an assessment that is certified. They do not provide you a certified assessment. They just provide you a presumptive letter. So I-R-S-C-E- R T I F I E D A S S E S S M E N T. Okay. And so I have to make some other corrections. Okay. Just so y'all know, got to make some other corrections. It's going to be a second for the system to catch up to me. And what I'm going to do, because I can, what, what I was going to do is we're going to pause y'all for one more second. I'll tell y'all what I, what corrections I. Okay.
The first thing I did, ladies and gentlemen, while I had you guys on that brief little pause, is I corrected this paragraph. This paragraph, it had and A-R-E, so it's now and or permitted by law. Then it also had an incomplete sentence being reported. The following principles associated with my rights apply respectively. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, Fair Credit Reporting Act, and the Truth in Lending Act. Penalties and assessments or failure to act and or failure to comply with statutory requirements. I know it wants to be assessments for failure to act. No, it's penalties and assessments because we're talking about the principles and or failure to act and or failure to comply and or statutory requirements uh, with the statutory requirements. So what, what I will do is A-N-D forward slash. I'll take care of that on both documents both documents so give me a second uh where are you at there we go a n d forward slash o r uh oh gotta get rid of that and i gotta save this one and and, 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 and and i gotta save the other one and then that will conclude this video ladies and gentlemen a lot of people are having some issues and some of them are taxation this is tax season and others are having an issue with banks and debt collectors and government agencies well ladies and gentlemen as we have brought to your attention come on now get on over here as we has brought to y'all's attention i gotta refresh this so y'all give me a second gotta go here then we gotta go back here because it said 154, and it should be the 156. So that's the one I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Now, ladies and gentlemen, those documents are complete. They are up, and they are at them. So this is the document for the banks and credit card companies and anybody who claims to be a creditor that document the original one the request for an accounting okay this document will apply for to each and every one of them okay well i want to thank y'all suicide self murder the rock dj scott la rock oh i'm sorry i thought dj scott la rock was still around when my philosophy came out, but that's not true. He had died just before that. Okay. I, 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 hey, somebody don't, well, Chris, you know, gotta go, y'all. Take care of yourself. Gotta go.